the first time I really started to, to hear Jimmy a lot and luckily get to play with him as well was in uh, 1980 when I uh, moved back to Cincinnati from, from New York to, to take the teaching gig at the conservatory. And uh, boy, that's a, the chance just to each, each night to uh, get that kind of inspiration. I, I, I played a couple of two tenor gigs with him, I remember, but more often I was playing with him in uh, Carmen De Leon's studio big band, and Carmen called that studio big band, and meaning it was a small big band, it was only three saxes and uh, two, two trumpets, trombone, and French horn, and tuba, so there was lots of blowing space, and uh, to just be right next to Jimmy every night on, on, on that, and uh, you know, hear that kind of uh, fearlessness, and uh, uh, soulfulness and take no prisoners attitude and the, the way he would uh, weave a story uh, it was just so uh, and, and incredibly influential on, on on me and I know that it just that formed my playing and way of thinking about uh, music uh, ever, ever after and uh, you know sometimes with my role in uh, jazz education and 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 the fact that I need to sometimes say things, explain things in a more analytical way or nuts and bolts. So, you know, for students, uh, some, sometimes people wrongly think that, you know, that, that I'm maybe particularly interested in that. I'm really not interested in that at all. I mean, for me, everything in music is the drama, the, you know, the emotion, uh, uh, the, you know, the, the, the heart, not, not the head. Of course, you have to have those, those other uh, nuts and bolts first, but uh, uh, so so any any of the people in, that play in my professional groups or students that study with me or that I conducted, I mean, they'll tell you that that that's my passion is the dramatic rise and fall of things, and I and I just think that uh, that probably formed me the the, the most was uh, of anybody was was, was that upfront and uh, close with, with 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 Jimmy, and you know, and I I had played. I was 25 when I moved back to, to Cincinnati, and I had played with some heavy people. I'd been on the road and done a lot of Rangers holiday recording sessions and all these things. So, so it wasn't like I hadn't heard, you know, some major players or gotten to trade with them at all. But, but this was just a, this was just at a different level with, with Jimmy. I'll, I'll never forget it. Beautiful. So, so uh, you grew up in Cincinnati. I did. Uh, you know, I, I, I moved away. You know, I went to I went to Berkeley in Boston and uh, um, Eastman School of Music in, in New York. And uh, uh, so so I growing up here. I, I I even when I was still in high school, I got to hear Jimmy some. I, I remember he even uh, uh, in, invited me to a, a few jam sessions when I was still in high school, and not not really very. Uh, far along in my improvising, but uh, he was really gracious and, 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 su and supportive. So. I just remember all the times talking to, to Fred uh, he, here, here in Cincinnati when he was still here, and then later when we brought Fred back as a guest artist at the conservatory, uh, off, you know, often often Jimmy's name would, would, would come up because I know he was a a tremendous uh, inspiration to, to Fred as well. And spe speaking of the conservatory too, I, I was I was really privileged then to uh, to get to feature Jimmy on a, on a number of concerts. Uh, I was talking about how I got to play with him professionally, and we'd be casually talking and hanging out. But it's a different kind of thing, you know, in that in that more formal big main stage concert setting. And uh, I, I, you know, we've had tons of guest artists at, at, at uh, CCM over, over the years, but I remember the, the very first time that we featured Jimmy was 1984, and it was a concert. It was some combo things and and uh, the two big bands, um, and and then later in '86, I think it was a uh, Jimmy and also Morgy Craig, kind of a tenor titans concert we called it. Um, and, but that, but that first time, I remember I introduced Jimmy to to, to the audience, and, and he just, you know, Jimmy was from another era. That, that he was really the last of, of the 
the, in the heyday of the, of the classic uh, uh, jazz giants like that that had a, had a certain kind of following. And um, uh, it, when, I, when I got to that point on that concert, it was a sold out concert. And, uh, and I said, you know, please welcome Jimmy McGarry. And a thousandth of a second after I said McGarry, the, the audience just just lit up. It was a you know thunderous applause and and shouting and uh, and you know I just I don't I don't think there was ever a concert even with the the, the, the superstars we had the, through the years in the next decades there that uh, had got that kind of response that, uh, that, that Jimmy did. But you know uh, there's a there's another kind of uh, inspiration uh, that I got from Jimmy, which was branching out in just, into just general life, not, not just music, uh, because I, uh, uh, you know, I, was, I was so impressed you know, with the, you know, of course, his artistry and the philosophy, his musical philosophy and all that. But you know, that carried over into his, his personal life and to everything else that he talked about uh, as well. So when you'd have a conversation with him uh, just, just, just about uh, the meaning of life, or politics, uh, you know, or literature, or art, or anything like that. He, he just constantly showed you what, what a, what a brilliant mind he, he had, how intellectual he was, and, and, and how articulate he, he always was. But the other thing that, that I got to do was feature him on one of those jazz live from the Hyatt. Uh, radio broadcasts that, that that I hosted, and that that was the organ trio with Wayne Yeager and and, and Bobby Scott. But in addition to, <clears throat> uh, uh, of course, all the, uh, the 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 concert part of it, uh, there was always an interview uh, between the two sets, uh, which, by the way, was a was a tricky thing trying to time that on the radio to get the get the start and the end just right for the station breaks and all that. But uh, uh, and, and also the musicians always wanted to, this was their chance to go get a drink or whatever. So you're, you're stealing their time when you force them to do an interview during that break. But anyway, uh, Jim, Jimmy was so uh, gracious uh, to, you know, to, do a, to, to do a great interview. Uh, but, I, but, but just the way he spoke on that interview was the same way I was used to him just speaking privately to, to me, with, with just so, so, so much knowledge of the world in general, not, not just of music. I, I played on it the first season, uh, and I, I, I can't remember, one my the faculty group from CCM or another professional group that, that, that I was in, and uh, uh, the pr producer of the show, uh, Barbara Pratt, um, needed someone to, uh, to, to host starting the, the, the next year, and um, so uh, I must have not uh, completely embarrassed myself too much with the way I spoke when I when I was interviewed so she took a chance on me and thought that maybe I could do, do some interviewing so um, I, I was new to that but but I thought boy what a chance to just to, you know hear fabulous uh, musicians each week and to get their get their story out there talk about Jimmy's saxophone playing from any angle that you want hmm. um, maybe um, knowledge you have of, you know, some sort of training or where, where how he developed as a musician, some insight that you could give that I wouldn't have or any insight you care. I, I never actually talked to him about uh, technical aspects of, of his training um, and not, not that he uh, was oblivious to that. Like we said, he's a, you know, a very, uh, very brilliant guy, so uh, maybe, maybe he just didn't uh, w want to talk about mm -hmm. that. But uh, I, I, you know, I definitely, uh, in, in, in addition to those the general inspirational things I was talking about before, I, I, I definitely picked up certain sound quality things. There, there was just sort of, sort of a, a, you know, a vibrancy and a, a bubbling essence of, of, of the sound that came out of him that. Uh, that uh, certainly influenced me, and you know how that is in the in the saxophone world or in any any instrument in, in jazz. We're we're all influenced by people. That doesn't mean we're we're necessarily 
uh, wanting to copy certain aspects of it. Uh, although sometimes sometimes we do. That's that's fine too. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But but the the point is, uh, it it's just it's just such a uh, a powerful uh, all encompassing sound that he had that it doesn't matter even if you were coming out. Of, of a different school of playing, uh, a different lineage than, than he was, it, it wouldn't matter. You would you you could not help but be influenced by um, uh, you know by by that in, intent and that focus of, of, of what he did. The, the other thing that he would do is he he would take chances in a certain way that he he, he wouldn't uh, he, he wouldn't just uh, fall in. To you know, to, this, to the same vocabulary uh, things that he that uh, that he would always do. He he he'd sort of go out on a limb a little bit, and you know, and a, a jazz can be like a, a, a tight wire act, and and, uh, and so that that sort of teetering on the edge, not knowing if it's gonna uh, you know quite work out, or maybe it sounds. I don't want to say the word shaky, like there's anything wrong with it. But you know, if you're a musician and you you understand what he's doing uh, in a way that the general audience doesn't, you might you might hear some things that you think, well, now, is that really going to work? What he's doing there, or is that really going to is he going to keep his place or make the changes? But none of that matters because he always did. He always found a way. He he he'd make you he'd make you wonder for a second which direction he was going, but then he'd always. Uh, uh, he'd always win the battle some, somehow. Do you think that was some, a sort of, um, um, in some way, intentional kind of thing to see what traps he could get himself out of him, or is that just the way the thing emerged from him and who he was? Okay. Yeah, I, I think it emerged from who he was. That's the, you put that well. Uh, he, he, he's just he's just searching. He's always searching for something. Always trying to tell a story. And if, if you're telling uh, an exciting story, which, which is really meaningful, you're, you're not going to just fall into certain ruts. You're, 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 you're going to keep exploring. So. Why is he remembered like that? In such, in such a way, when nobody listens to it. Why? Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's a tribute to... Uh, to, to the power of what he created, that, that even though so many young people have not had that opportunity to, to hear the recordings, the, the, that legend just just keeps passing passing down. Because like I like I said, there was something about that uh, the heyday of jazz, that classic not classic in a style way, but you know the the, the classic period of of, of jazz. Uh, you know, stars. I use the word stars because this is this is an artistry. It's not a stardom thing, but you know, it's just it's just a, a a different way of thinking about jazz musicians. And so, even the young people that haven't uh, had that, that didn't have a chance to hear him uh, when he was alive or haven't even heard the recordings, I, I think they're still still hearing the stories now. The older I get and more in, involved in and in, 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 in having the luck of uh, performing with uh, or, or just hearing all, all the great uh, musicians around, I, I guess I, uh, I'm, I'm less concerned with where someone lives or with how, quote, famous they are or exactly how many recordings some, some, somebody makes. Um, to, to me, everything is just... Uh, just just in here and just just what you know what what kind of story is somebody telling what influence are they having uh, uh emotionally on other people and uh, uh and, and, and jimmy was the the, the tops at, at, at that by by anybody's normal standards uh, in, the, in the quote competition of, of course you can say the like the cutting contests he had with sonny stitt some of those legends of people coming to town like that uh of course then in a in a in just a literal sense, he 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 did operate at that uh, world class uh, uh, level, uh, competitive with anyone. But I, I don't even think that matters. What what matters to me was uh, was just what was coming uh, from his soul, and that that's that's what made him world class.